Hello everyone. So I spent some time trying to come up with a tile set that I can use for a sort of old school 16-bit RPG. Uh, I've been spending some time, you know, playing the the old 16-bit classics, and I thought I'd try my hand at doing my own sort of thing. And uh, recently. Um, in, in the last year or so, uh, a, a Sprite, a e Sprite, I'm never sure how to pronounce that. Anyway, came out with its uh, version 1.3 beta and includes some great new tools that make uh, creating tile sets a whole lot easier. So I thought I'd give that a whirl and uh, it certainly did help things uh, turn out a lot easier. So uh, you can see right here, I started off by laying in a simple grass tile just a simple two-color tile with uh, one light green sort of background and some uh, darker green uh, texture on it. And uh, just going through my files here now. But uh, what I'm using is the new tiled mode. And all right, more on that later. What you see right here is me creating a pattern. Um, I'm going to be creating a dirt texture. In fact, I already have. And uh, this is a little template to help me figure out how to merge those two together because I'm going to be creating the transition tiles that allow me to go from grass to dirt. And uh, you need to make sure that you have your straights and your curves set up properly in order to uh, make those tra transitions smooth. And that pink shape there is sort of the map that shows exactly how we're going to transition from one tile to another. So you can see I've just uh, created copies of the grass tile and the uh, dirt tile, and now I'm creating the straights uh, for the top, bottom, left, and right. And you can also see, if you look on the top left, if uh, you've, you're not uh, used to the new um, tile making mode in uh, A-Sprite, uh, I'm in sort of the, the middle option there. And uh, that's the one that allows you to create new tiles when you draw on top of them. And uh, now I've just switched back to the left option, just above the color palette there, which allows you, when you draw on a sprite, it um, will draw on all sprites of the same type. So you can see I'm drawing on the middle of that tile on the left there, but uh, that changed all three of them at the same time. And that's sort of the beauty of this new system, and it makes it so easy to draw repeating tiles like this. And you see I'm doing the top and bottom here for the transitions. And uh, just like that, I'm nearly done with the straights. Next, we need to uh, create the corners, and that's uh, going to be coming next. You can see I'm moving a few of those straight pieces into the uh, positions so we can create the corners. And I've just switched from the um, mode where you copy tiles to the mode where you create new tiles, which allows me to create those uh, little corner pieces. Uh, I'm also using a mask here. Uh, by using the selection rectangle, I was able to select just the corners, which makes it uh, a lot easier to draw new content, new content on them without accidentally straying into the adjacent tiles. And you can see right there, I did the selection mask again and then hit the uh, lines uh, just so that I can draw these uh, transition areas and not have to worry about accidentally changing those tiles to either side if my uh, mouse goes a little bit too far over. And I'm just picking a from a very small number of colors here, uh, just uh, two colors for the grass plus an extra dark color for the border, and uh, same for the dirt, um, two colors for the dirt itself plus an extra color for the border to sort of get a shadow area there. And uh, you can see I'm now going for the uh, inside corners. Um, Oh, actually, no, I just finished the inside corners. These are now sort of the cross corners where you have uh, dirt uh, on two sides and then uh, grass on two sides. Uh, so these are important too. They, uh, they're kind of rare, but uh, they will be coming up and it's useful to have them. And if you look at the uh, little figure, that little sort of throwing star figure we made there, we've been laying these tiles on top of that figure uh, with the dirt uh, with the yellow, yellowish dirt part of the tile corresponding to the pink part and the grass uh, area corresponding to the uh, blank bit. So that's just a convenient way to organize all those different tiles into a nice simple diagram which is going to make uh, using them to tile a scene a bit later a whole lot easier. 
Yeah, well, what you see next is I'm sort of creating a cliff area because we're going to want to sort of uh, have different elevations on our town. So uh, we're just sort of creating a nice classic uh, cliff uh, face here. And just like we did with the dirt tile, this is also going to need to have its straights and then its corners. And we're going to use a similar strategy by copying the tiles in uh, the, the, um, the, the uh, copy tile mode. So you can see when we change that one tile, all, all tiles of that copy get the same changes made to them. But then we're going to strategically switch to the uh, when you draw, it creates a new tile automatically mode, which is going to allow us to uh, create the initial um, difference, which we can then switch back to the first mode and um, affect all tiles the same way. Should probably create a video just on uh, how to do this a little bit later. But for now, I'm just giving you sort of a demonstration on this uh, one tile set I threw together. And you can see now we are doing the, uh, the convex uh, corners here. I mean, yeah, the convex corners. So we can create a uh, circular sort of objects. And in a second, we're gonna switch over to the concave corners. Yeah, here we go now. And it's just as simple as setting up your straights and then putting down your transition text uh, texture in the middle. And then you can just uh, set up your mask and then just uh, draw in those um, transition areas. So uh, there are the um, concave corners and we're just reusing a lot of those same colors that we started off with, uh, with the straights. And uh, for this particular cliff texture, there is no middle. We're just reusing the grass texture. So uh, we're going to leave that little hole in the middle there blank, uh, just the pink square. And uh, now I think all we need to do is the cross corners. We're going to be setting that up. And just like we did with the dirt tile, it's uh, just we have the meeting point of these two uh, cliff areas. And we're just going to round that out so that they, uh, they touch and then uh, fill in those gaps with, uh, start with a solid color, and then you uh, just add in the, uh, the, uh, the lighter colors, and then it's, uh, after a while, it becomes uh, less geometry and more just painting. And at this point, it just becomes a little bit intuitive, uh, just a lot of practice, and just make sure you need to get those um, shapes correctly, and then uh, once, once your big shapes are correct, uh, putting in the details, putting in that uh, uh, those extra highlights uh, just makes it pop out and look uh, that much more real. And now we have the, uh, the cliff section done. We're just going to put that over to the side. And uh, next up, we have the, uh, we're going to create a bit of a, um, well, we need a house to put in our town. Wouldn't be much of a town without a house. So you can see uh, us starting on the brick and roof textures here. Starting off with just something crude uh, and forgetting for a moment how to uh, select these tiles properly. But uh, I have the mask up there now. And uh, now I've just switched back to the uh, copy mode. And you can see we've uh, just created uh, duplicates of those tiles uh, all over the place there. So now we're just sort of roughing in a very simple roof and uh, shortly we're going to be going back to the bricks below to just create a, a simple you know, one, two set up here. These are going to be sort of the base background of uh, our tiles. Just going to keep on working this until we have something that looks and sort of works as sort of a, a brick texture. We want a little bit of texture on it, but not so much that it becomes obnoxious. And uh, that looks good. Just uh, touching up the roof tiles again. It's, uh, you always put most of your effort into this, the, the final details. And when you look back on it, you know, sometimes those final details, you can barely even tell the difference. But uh, it, it catches your attention at the time you're drawing it. Anyhow, uh, we've just switched back to the, um, the, the, uh, the, the create new tile mode just briefly to create those sides. So see we're def redefining some of those tiles to be the edges of our building and we just uh, moved a few of them off to the side to give us a little bit more space and now 
uh, we want the bottom of our building. We're going to add a little bit of a pediment here just to give us uh, some transition between the, the, brickwork, the brickwork itself and the uh, grass down in front. And uh, just uh, giving ourselves a little bit more space here and uh, mocking in a crude door. I'm going to go for one of those round top doors. So I spent some time thinking about just how uh, tall this door needs to be. Uh, the characters that we're going to be using in this game are going to be about 24 pixels high, so uh, a one tile high door isn't going to work because that's just going to be too small. So uh, we're trying to create a one and a half tile high door here. And I uh, want you to include the, the stoop in front of the door and the extra space at the top. This, this should be about the size of uh, one of the characters in our game. And I'm just playing around with the colors here, creating a uh, wood, uh, something that looks a little bit like wood, and uh, adding a little cross beam to uh, those tiles uh, just above the door so we can have a little bit of variety in our house. Uh, we don't want, well, we want to have options to have something other than just the, uh, the plain white stone. And uh, we're also going to want something just below the roof to give, the, give us uh, that little bit of transition. So we're creating a bit of a, uh, a wooden border here, or I guess maybe it's more of a brick border. But uh, the whole idea is to just give us that transition space between the, the roof tiles and the, the house tiles. And uh, just adding a little bit of highlights there to give it a little bit more texture. And now finishing up those uh, corner pieces. Just so the, uh, the, cor the edges of our house can also connect to the ground well too. And uh, playing with the grass too, so that um, we have that nice smooth transition from the, the grass grassy lawn onto the, uh, the tiles themselves. And uh, over here what I'm doing is I'm just creating the uh, preparing the tiles themselves. So we're going to be moving that block over to the side in a bit so that those can be the tiles we're actually going to use in the map, uh, as opposed to the ones on the right, which are more of our editing area. And you can see here, I'm just uh, giving the door a little bit of a recess. Uh, what we had before was a little bit too forward. Now, uh, by adding in that shadow and moving the doorknob up a little bit, we're pushing that door back in space a little bit. So looks uh, sunken in and not like it was just painted on top of the brickwork itself. And uh, now uh, we're also going to need a window too. So we're using a lot of the colors in the door. Uh, I think I added some new ones here. But uh, just sort of a basic wooden frame. And uh, you just start off with you know, the simple geometric shapes. And once you're happy that the basic shape is right, then you can go in with a, a couple of highlight colors and a couple of darker colors to give it sort of a, an almost painted look. And, makes it uh, really come alive. It's uh, kind of kind of neat how that um, stark geometric shape can melt away with just a, a few highlights and uh, a few darks in there. But uh, we're borrowing a lot of colors from the roof. I'm uh, using the sampler to go up to the roof and come down for this uh, little awning above the window. And uh, this is all being drawn directly on the tile. You might not have taken a look at the uh, layers down there. Uh, the layer at the very bottom, that is actually unused. That's blank right now. Uh, the tile set layer is what we're doing all this work on. And so far, everything that's been drawn has been just drawn directly on that layer. And uh, that's how powerful this new uh, tile system that uh, AE Sprite comes with. Uh, if you were doing this before with the older way, you'd probably have know three or four different layers and you'd constantly be switching between them then switching into select mode so that you could move the tiles around and it would be just painful to use uh, with this you can just um, as long as you're in tiled mode and you keep a uh, good track of whether you're in the copy tile state or you're in the create new tile state then you can just move uh, duplicates of tiles around uh, just draw directly on top of them and uh, create just uh, complex tiles like this without having to shuffle around layers and constantly be moving the, or 
constantly be trying something and then uh, moving them around to make sure they work and then saying, oh no, they don't work, let's get those things lined up and like doing that like 15, 16, 17 times just to make sure uh, all your repeated tiles are repeating correctly and everything's matched up. And uh, anyway, you can see I'm roughing in a second window here. This is a double wide window so that uh, we have a little bit of variety in our house because uh, some houses have um, wider windows and you know, if we only had that one narrow window for the whole thing, a lot of the houses would look kind of similar, kind of samey. So this will be useful for some variety. And uh, there we are, we are uh, moving those copies of those tiles off to the side so that they're in a convenient place for um, when we use them in our uh, JRPG editor. Uh, more on that later, that's going to be at the end of this video. You can see we've got a, a pretty decent basic house going here. Now uh, just like we put some borders on the house itself, we're going to put a few borders on the roof. We're going to start with the spine of the roof right here and sort of create uh, the effect of sort of uh, alternating tiles uh, that if you've ever looked at a tiled roof they'll uh, usually have a little strip just running along the spine at the top and uh, here we're adding a little bit of shadow to make that a little bit more prominent but uh, that helps give some definition so you know where the the very top of the roof is and uh, you'll notice every now and then some numbers flash on the screen uh, every tile in a tile set has a number on it and when you uh, press and hold down the control key, that will um, display the number. So uh, that can be useful um, for keeping track of different tiles. And if you have two tiles that look the same and you're wondering, you know, are those in fact the same tile? If you press the control key and they have the same number, then you know that they are in fact the same tile. And if you're in the copy mode and you draw on one of those tiles, all tiles with that same number are gonna be updated. Whereas uh, if they have different numbers, they're actually different tiles, and so drawing on top of one tile is not going to affect the other, because even though they might look the same, they are not, uh, as far as a spray is concerned, the same tile. So that can take a bit of getting used to, but uh, once you've um, got that sort of uh, under your belt and you're keeping track of it, it makes it, you know, that's sort of the key of this system, of being able to copy tiles around, and, um, you know, we, uh, of being able to create repeat tiles and being able to draw between repeated tiles so you can have these nice smooth transitions with a, a minimum of fuss. Now you can see right now uh, we've done the roof that is facing the viewer. Now we're coming up with the uh, sideways roofs that are um, parallel to the viewer and uh, these angle downwards so I'm uh, using the straight line tool to figure out where the edges of the uh, roof should be. And uh, I'm going to change this around a little bit later because you can see those lines are not as even as they could be. And uh, I just uh, created an extra layer there so that we can have uh, that transition between those middle tiles between because uh, before uh, they weren't quite transitioning properly. Well, at least... Um, they were going directly into the the bottom row. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain, but um, by having that extra extra row of uh, tiles in there, we can be uh, a little bit more careful in making sure that uh, adjacent middle tiles are going to flow naturally into other adjacent middle tiles. And uh, once we have that set up, you can see me going through and uh, putting in the highlights and the lowlights to make those roof tiles look a little bit more like roof tiles. Although uh, it's at about this point I realize the, the middle tiles there that I was talking about are not quite matching up. So you're going to see me go through and uh, redo a lot of those lines in the middle. Yeah, here we go. So just sort of cleaning out a lot of what was there, redrawing them so that they're more evenly spaced. And we've got a, a better flow going into them and uh, just sort of tearing them down to just the primary colors and then going over them again with the the cut line with the uh, division lines between the tiles and then the uh, the highlights again
So adding in some darks here so that we can get a little bit of uh, definition between the tiles. And now we're going to try to create a transition between the roof itself and the, uh, the wall area behind the roof. So you can see I just created uh, some copies of those um, wall tiles. And now we're drawing in the uh, sort of continuation of that border area, that sort of brick border area. And uh, we're sort of merging that in with the roof tiles itself so that this is going to be a, a new set of tiles uh, that transition directly from the roof to the uh, brick area. And just making more space over there. Now, and you can see right now, uh, they also transition into the grass up top. Uh, a little later on, towards the end of this video, I'm going to undo a lot of that. Uh, but for now, I was thinking along the lines of you know, uh, the entire tile just being one brick and uh, so the background being part of the roof too. Like I say, I'm going to change that later on, but uh, for now that's uh, what I'm thinking here. And uh, there, I just made a copy of those uh, tiles over there. That's uh, just putting them sort of in the loading dock there. We're going to move them off to the side too a bit later. And now I'm going to prepare to flip this. Uh, I had a couple of stabs at this because I was getting uh, mixed up between whether I should be in copy mode or whether I should be in the uh, duplicate mode uh, because when you copy and paste um, tiles like this and then you try to flip them horizontally uh, it matters which mode you're in. Okay that looks about right and now I'm just creating sort of a duplicate on the side there in case I want to make any changes later. And next we're going to draw the spine for the parallel roof as well. So just um, starting off roughing in the shape using the line tool. And we're going to finish off by uh, putting in those bricks. And just uh, finishing up by drawing in those tiles. And again, this is much like how we were doing the roof tiles before. Uh, you start off with just the just the shapes the, and uh, the basic colors, and then you can touch it up by adding in some highlights and some lowlights to make it look more dimensional. And we're uh, putting a spine on this roof here too, because that's a, a good way to communicate to the viewer exactly where the top of the roof is. And uh, just sort of gives the whole thing a sort of a neatness to it. All right, so we're storing that roof off to the side for now. And uh, you can see here I'm making um, the stone that's going to go underneath it, as well as uh, the grass that's going to go above it. Now I'm just copying that roof on top of those tiles and uh, once again mixing up the mode that I'm in. So once I get that sorted out then I'm able to paste those tiles right on top of the the other tiles and have them merge together into new tiles. And now I've uh, moved the entire roof complex off to the side there. All right next up I think this is where I uh, create a tree. Nope this is the chimney. So uh, what's, what's a house without a chimney, especially if you're sort of targeting, targeting the Renaissance or medieval era. So just quickly borrowing a few colors from the roof to uh, throw together a chimney. And that looks good. Going to be moving that off onto our uh, pallet side shortly. And next for the tree, so uh, we're going to start with some tiles in the background there and um, just roughing in a tree on top of it. I think I actually moved those grass tiles onto layer one. It's, I think the only time in this whole process that I uh, used layer one. 
And it's just give us uh, some background so that we know when we draw the tree, it's going to stand out nicely against the background. And I'm being careful to keep everything inside uh, three tiles here. And in fact, I put down a mask to start with, just to make sure we don't accidentally draw outside those borders. And now I'm just copying and pasting the tree over there. And we're moving our uh, chimney and uh, our tree over to the pallet area. And again with the tree too. Um, I think, no, oh, no, we're just reorganizing things. Yeah, this is where I remember, remember that we needed some staircases. So just uh, creating a little bit of space here. Uh, starting just by laying down the colors we're going to want to use, sort of a, uh, a middle sort of wood color. Then we lighten that up to look like the top of uh, several wood planks, but we have those dark lines to be the bit that's going to be uh, the vertical of our stairs. And sort of uh, copying the same sort of format you've seen in a lot of RPG games. And uh, of course we're going to want some sort of marker at the edges of our stairs, sort of a, a railing or something and a transition to the grassy area below. So we turn those six tiles into six different tiles. And if you look at the left side there, you uh, would have seen we were in uh, the draw new and we still are in the draw new mode, which is uh, why when we draw in those tiles, it creates brand new tiles. And uh, now I'm sort of copying and pasting uh, parts of those stairs together and putting them off to the side. All right. So much for the tile set. After creating all those tiles, we probably want to make sure that they work well together. So I've opened up Godot here, and you can see the tile set in the bottom there. And I was uh, spending some time creating a bit mask. And uh, I'm not really going to go into how to set up tile sets in Godot, but uh, let's uh, just take it. Well, that's what we're doing. And uh, now we're just uh, rearranging a few of our tiles on the side here. I noticed that the house was up so high we couldn't use uh, Godot's tile set to uh, create a tile for it properly. So just moving moving that around. See me uh, uh, creating tile atlases here and creating uh, the tree tiles. This is basically just grouping some of the tiles in our palette together so that they form nice neat units in our palette menu here. All right, time to finally create a background. So here we are creating a nice grassy field, and now we're using that dirt tile, and thanks to that neat uh, shape we created, that makes it easy to uh, lay down patches of dirt. And uh, same thing goes for the uh, cliff tile, but um, we're doing that one manually. We, we're not using the auto tile feature here. We're just uh, using a tile atlas for that. Now let's uh, make a simple house using those house pieces we made. Put a roof on it and uh, some windows and a door. And there uh, goes our staircase. And uh, we also created that other roof. So let's get a house using that roof style too. Just putting it together, just uh, using those tile atlases to, they really help in um, breaking up the tile set into logical groups so that all our house pieces sort of come together and all our roof pieces come together and so on. And I'm just using the uh, copy and paste uh, tools here to grab a copy of that uh, the house we made in the uh, lower left and making a duplicate of, uh, duplicate of its house on the uh, upper right. And uh, you might have noticed that I'm using uh, two different tile layers here. So the houses are actually on the second layer. And now I'm putting a few trees down. And uh, all right, that looks like a, a decent scene. And uh, here I've uh, brought in a character I've been working on. And you can see, I, I'm not sure if you caught that, but uh, there are some problems with our tile set. Uh, a few of these tiles have that green grass in the background, and I just realized that was a bit of a mistake. So you can see me here uh, taking that out either erasing it or um, moving over the tiles that don't have the green in the background. So we've just redone that. And uh, we've also, we're also creating a new layer. So we're moving the roofs up to layer three. So that should help with uh, being able to walk behind things too. So uh, yes, the, the ground and the grass is on layer one. The 
bodies of the houses are in layer two, and then our character is on the next layer, and then finally we have the roofs on the top layer. So now, we also move the tops of the trees to the top layer. So you might notice here that when uh, our main character walks behind the trees, uh, actually no, he was walking on top of the trees because at that point the trees were still on layer two. Now we've just moved them up to layer three, and this is the final. And you can see our main character is now walking behind the trees. And you can walk behind the roofs, and uh, but cannot go through anything, can't go through the houses, can't go through the bricks there. It's nice and blocked by stuff. And that is just sort of a quick way to put together a uh, overworld RPG from uh, starting with a, a blank file and uh, coming up to here. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, leave something in the comments below if you have any comments or ideas. And um, yeah, thanks for watching.